All right, so thanks everyone for being here. This is a map review for CP Vanguard. Um, this isn't a very conventional map for Highlander. I mean, they play it once every maybe two or three seasons, uh, but it's, I'd, I'd say it's one of probably the better CP maps. People argue that Gully and Process are better, but um, personally, I always feel like those are better for Sixes players and uh, Vanguard. It just uh, fits well with Highlander for a variety of reasons that we'll go over. But uh, let's talk about just basic callouts as we go toward the middle, and then we'll talk about the mid when we get there. So obviously this is spawn. Um, the enemy team can't go into these shutters, but they can go into this area here that's open. So keep that in mind if you're running out as a medic or someone, uh, the enemy team can chase you all the way back until that shutter closes. Um, and I just like to call this uh, like front of spawn or upper even this entire area uh, over here I call this sentry because typically engineers just love perching their sentry up here um, however they'll also perch it up here and this I just call left so left spawn sentry uh, balcony works too whatever you want to call it just make sure you establish a consistency with the team um, and then obviously point uh, and most of the other calls aren't going to be as important on last just because if a team is pushing into your last um, it's not going to be a, like oh scouts on crates sort of thing I mean you can say scouts on crates if scouts on crates but it's going to be more of a their combo just push into last everyone gets to the point before they win basically um, but some things you can uh, call out are if they're coming in from upper uh, if they're coming in from under from stairs or from right side uh, and those are just the many entrances obviously vents is another thing especially if um, you have a sentry up on this platform uh, going through vents the team can take that sentry out pretty easily so make sure you can have someone washing there um, pyros help a lot in this area because it's so close quarters uh, solder can also help a lot in this area. That's if you're defending. But anyway, we, we'll get into the strategy a bit later. Let's finish the calls. Um, leaving here, this wooden area is just wood, is what I like to call it, because it's really the only wooden area on second point. Um, bridge over here. Um, up here is shaft, because it's an elevator shaft. Um, let's see, under, obviously, always a call under. Uh, because there's always multiple layers to a map. Um, far left, or you can just say left, and then right. Uh, there's under right, and there's upper right. So just keep that in mind. This becomes a spawn right here, um, once you cap a certain amount of points. And then you have the lobby. This area here is lobby. It's real wide open, really easy to get sniped in, really easy to get... Um, well, actually, no, that's really the big scare here is uh, hit scan and snipers. So if you have an NG, a scout chasing you out through lobby, you're going to have a big, a hard time. But because it's so wide open and the geometry is so weird, uh, sticky, stickies, pipes, rockets, anything that explodes basically has a way harder time of hitting you because, uh, you know, if, if they shoot a rocket up onto you on these stairs, then they can hit any number of things before the rocket actually gets to you and you just round the corner and you're out of their range. So keep in mind hit scan is the big um, offender here uh, and heavy tracking of course. And then um, then you have points. So this I just call board or bridge, whatever you want to call it. Um, my team in the past has called it uh, above point. I mean obviously because it's above. But whatever you want to say and then the other calls should be kept really general on point because you don't want to confuse people um, for example over here I call it a uh, platform because it's literally a platform and there's one right across on the other side the only reason this has a more specific call is because the sniper loves standing back here and back here um, main out of the main door uh, ramp and that's basically all you need to know ramp main platform uh, and then left if it's far left and right if it's again far right over here so um, that's just what I like to call things I don't like making things very specific um, the more general something is the and the easier it is to describe with words 
Uh, typically, the more your team is going to understand the call when you say it. So if, if someone says ramp, then there's really only one ramp on mid. Um, you know, all the other places have stairs. So you know exactly where their sniper's standing, for example, if he decides to stand here. Anyway, so let's talk about mid. On this mid, uh, your goal is to get to the mid not necessarily before their demo or heavy or whatever, as is traditional. But this map actually doesn't cater very well, or this map's mid, I should say, doesn't cater very well to any class besides the sniper. Um, there are so many angles on mid, uh, like right out through the center in main, right on the ramp as I was talking about, over on platform. The sniper can literally stand behind this concrete wall or behind this corner if he wants, if he's really forward. Um, sniper can stand back here and snipe from this angle. There are so many angles. This has the added benefit, by the way, from under here, of being able to see through this net to see when someone rounds that corner right there. And then you can peek them instead of having to uh, be out in the open before you attack them. The sniper basically has uh, just so many sight lines. It's, imp it's almost impossible to avoid the sniper. So... Um, on your mid, what you're trying to be isn't necessarily their team, it's their sniper. I would even recommend, uh, and this is just me, I would recommend having your heavy run the gloves are running urgently just for the mid fight. Have him run to the middle, have everyone else, you know, do their basic rollout, and have the soldier just whip the, de the sniper all the way to mid. Because if you can get your sniper to mid before even like half of their team gets to mid, um, then your sniper gets an advantage, he gets a free sight line, and chances are the first person out to mid is going to be the demo, because every team uh, decides to do a fast demo rollout, and if the demo's alone, he's just going to get headshot, especially if none of the rest of his team gets there quickly, and once the demo's dead, of course, the other team can't spam onto you. As for your flank classes, right off the bat, you can have uh, your scout and your soldier go around through ramp and even come around and flank the other team, as is their name. They can come around onto the platform to uh, prevent the sniper from standing up here, or they can even push further in into lobby during the mid-fight and get the, the combo from behind. Again, that's only if they're not noticed immediately. If they're noticed immediately, just give it up. and um, Because, you know... Flank doesn't do well when a heavy's focusing them down, as you guys know. Um, engineer uh, is pretty fun on this point, actually. Basically, just mini spam all over the place, and you don't want to make them obvious. You want to make them in kind of asshole corners. So there's a lot of geometry on this map. If you put a mini right here behind this wall, not only can no one really see it until they get about midway to the point, but uh, when they do, then they're going to start taking damage, and it'll take them a second to look at it, and... Well, you know the rest of the story, the mini sentry kills the scout or whatever. Um, or around, basically use the geometry around this corner, in this corner. Uh, this doesn't work as often as the other one, but it works. Behind this wall, like on their side, if the engineer can get a mini up here, it's usually super funny because people expect the mini to be either there or there, and then it's behind them and it just, it fucks shit up. So, engineer, your game is mini spam and staying alive. Um, keep your shotgun out throughout the most of this mid because you're going to need it people just climb up onto shit and jump onto you speaking of that um spy can take great make great use of this elevation to backstab as many people as possible he can get onto a lot of this geometry and i recommend having your spy uh actually explore what things he can stand on all over the mid uh as for um, the combo classes, you guys are fighting a basic mid. The important thing is to call the sniper as soon as you can and to avoid him. So if the sniper's out main, you don't want to rotate your combo main, but you might want to rotate your combo out onto the platform because then you have cover from that wall and you can spam down onto their combo as you move forward. Um, same thing if the sniper's on platform, you can move the combo out through this area and you have cover from this wall. Either way, uh, keep note of their sniper, call him early, and make sure your combo's pushing from an end that the sniper can't directly kill, because on this map, chances are the sniper's gonna do a lot of work on the mid, and that's what you want to avoid. You want to be able to distract the enemy team and move them into your sniper while avoiding their sniper, at least for the mid. Um, the mid is essentially one once either team loses a sniper and a combo class. So uh, if you guys lose a sniper and a heavy, 
then you lose the mid. But if they lose a sniper and a demo before you guys lose anyone, then they lose the mid. So keep that in mind and um, take the ground accordingly. Now going past uh, mid, lobby is another uh, kind of soft hold for the offensive team. The reason why I say offensive team is because on defense, you're not going to want to hold lobby. If they've already pushed you out of mid, you're going to want to back out of lobby because um, too many times have I seen people die backing out of lobby. Also, the angles work against your favor when you're backing out rather than pushing forward. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, this map is basically built to be pushed. So whoever wins the mid will get a lot of ground really fast unless your team knows the smart places to hold. So what I mean by that is when the, let's say red team, red team just captured mid, they're gonna push in into blue. So red team pushes in and immediately they're going in through this giant opening. Upon coming into this giant opening, not only do they have a sight line on everything that's in front of them, so they immediately can start focusing down. Like there's not gonna be a surprise here unless maybe you have your spy up here in the corner um, waiting for their combo to pass. But honestly, it's, it's largely ineffective um, unless you intend to push in with your team afterwards, in which case it, uh, it can be effective, but that's another story entirely. Um, you guys are nerds. So, pushing into uh, lobby, this team has the advantage. They have a wide open doorway. And then the defending team, trying to get out of lobby, they have sideways doors. So as they're backing out, the entire time they're backing out, at least until they round a corner, they're in the enemy team's sight line. Whereas, you have more vertical doors. So... These holes, th these doors are perpendicular to the character model as it's backing out, which means that you're more exposed, whereas these doors are parallel to the character model, which means that if you want to back out, you can just back out straight out onto mid. So all in all, all in all, it's just way worse for the defending team. Don't hold lobby, but you can hold it as the offending team. The offending team, before they're ready to push in, let's say you're building a... Uh, an uber you can be in lobby here uh and you can have your demo watching this main area uh, maybe you're heavy watching behind making sure no one gets over here maybe your flank is over on this side and you've covered all your bases there's really only three entrances unless uh the heavy lets someone get passed around this way in which case someone can get behind and kill your medic from there so if the heavy's watching this area he should be vigilant making sure to call anyone who's behind so that the pyro can rotate his vision and get rid of any threats um, but anyway you build uber you push into this point now on this point uh, red team let's say they were or, or blue team rather let's say they were pushed back up to here the way they're gonna defend is mostly if uh, blue team decides to or rather if the pushing team decides to hold in lobby then the defending team can hold up on top of the point because ultimately what this does is it allows them to spam down onto the opposing team as they're coming into second. And you get a good, like, uh, sight of all three entrances, far right, main, and far left. Um, it's just beneficial. What you need to watch out for is that from here, the sniper can look at your feet from back here. So if there's a sniper standing all the way back here, he can see your feet as you're standing on that platform. Medic, basically, you just don't want to cross uh anything beyond the point so like you see the edge of the point walking past that means you're gonna get shot like you can get full charge body shot and die but if you're on the point or behind the point um anywhere on this side not only will you avoid the sniper sightline right there but let's say the sniper rotates over there you just back off a little bit and then this plank of wood covers you. Let's say a sniper will rotates the other way. You can just be here and this brick wall covers you. And if you really need to get out, you're probably the furthest back person so you can get all the way out. So make sure you don't have your medic extend past this point. That's very important. Um, but anyway, let's say that the offending team decides not to hold lobby and they're pushing all the way through. Well, by now, uh, that's another thing about this map spawns on the defending team aren't as slow as they usually are they're pretty fast which means that by now if the other team all decided to cap mid and then come in you should have had the spawns to set back up you can watch from all the way back here pretty safely because there's not going to be a sniper sightline from this entire area oh i forgot one 
important call. This is house. This entire area here is house. Anyway, um, you're not going to get a sniper silent from this entire area. You can call a sniper from there or from main. And from back here, you can spam onto the point as a demo. You can shoot onto it as a heavy. You can look at under. You can look at left. You can look at right. Uh, this is a good place to stop the pushing team's momentum, especially since you spawn so quickly. Now, don't get overzealous because if their demo is super aggressive, uh, you don't want to be in this area while their demo is aggressing because there's a lot of geometry here and a few sticks will take out a lot of people. So just make sure that your team, you know, they're doing good spam and whatnot. But if it's time to back out, call that quickly and back out. Now, there used to be an ammo pack here. And this is something that confuses even comp players all the time. Now it's here. I've literally seen silver and platinum players run over what here, you guys talking look about? for the ammo pack, and then upon not seeing the ammo pack, not knowing what to do, and going back up and through vents and all the way back to spawn. You don't have to do that. You just round the corner and there's an ammo pack right here. So please... Uh, don't forget that that's important um, now this truck and these tires is a Pretty good place. I've seen it work often although maybe too often now it might be too meta But pretty good place for a spy to stand and wait for the enemy combo to come out um, You can get up here by crouch jumping um, Let's see and these are all defensive things by the way um, backing out you don't want to stay in this lobby or, or rather you can be in this lobby but not on this staircase as soon as you step onto the staircase or pass you do, you're gonna take serious demo spam uh but being in this lobby is okay the opening there is smaller depending on how left and right you are so you're not gonna take as much spam you're less likely to get shot by a sniper because it's a small window um and you can always get the health and then back out uh either way vents or um just main uh, let's say, oh, okay, uh, maybe you could call the front spawn heaven. That's totally a valid suggestion. Either way, let's say that you, you're pushing, you're the pushing team now. So what you typically do as the pushing team is you push through here with the combo if the sentry is this close. And if the sentry is not that close, then you just push through the other end with the combo over here. And then you try and take control of this uh, this upper area. Now, why would you want this upper area? Well, this allows you to see into their entire last area. This is a great place to hold. It's a great place to get some information. You have your health pack and your ammo pack right here, um, and you can you have a variety of entrances to choose from. So if you want, you can go to balcony right here, hit the sentry directly in front of you, or you can go to far right platform or platform or whatever you want to call it and shoot the sentry if it's up there um or you can go underneath and just walk straight onto the point either way uh like this area this lobby area upper lobby area um is very good to have so if your combo's not up here make sure your flank is taking care of it and um, as the pushing team, you don't necessarily need uh, your pyro to constantly be with your combo. So you can rotate the pyro with the flank. Same thing with the, uh, with the engineer. And my, my player just made a good point. He says he can't see through the windows into this lobby. Um, yeah, so defending team can't see through these windows at all. So you can just stand in there and basically set up camp. And... Um, it, it's it's just a great position to have so make sure either your flank or your combo is dealing with that um, So as usual you move your flank where your combo is not uh, so have your flank uh, be in the upper lobby if your combo decides to push far left and Vice versa if your combo decides to push upper lobby have your flank push far left because Chances are your combo is pushing in whichever direction the sentry is closest to. So if the sentry is right up here, again, you can just move your combo in through here. If the sentry is up there, you can move your combo in through the lobby. Um, however, uh, the reason why we alternate where the flank stands is because if the sentry is up there, then a soldier can spam it from all the way back here, whereas a demo or a heavy can't really do that. So you want you want to do this not necessarily because it's the meta, but more just because 
uh, distances matter a lot on this last. It's a very big last, even though it's kind of a... It's a very big horizontal distance, I guess, to my left and right right now, than it is a vertical distance to my front and back. So this is much smaller than this, if that makes sense. All right, so a few other things. As the defending team, take advantage of the fact that... Oh, I'm not blue. Um, take advantage of... Here, I'll just switch teams real quick then. I'm just... I just want to show you guys this. Take advantage of the fact that by going through the under shutter, the shutter that's right underneath, you can literally walk straight onto the point. This is great for pyros because as you can see, there's a lip to the door right here. And this means that the demo, if he's standing on point and spamming sticks onto, uh, in, into there to trap it, um, it's going to be hard for him because of the angle. The sticks arch and they're probably going to hit this lip, especially with inexperienced demos. However, of course, if they aim carefully and they take their time, they can get to the shutter. But basically, you don't need to worry so much about traps coming out of this. Um, and you can see them immediately because you're on the top of the stairs. Uh, and you can just run your pyro out over and over again because, again, he has really quick spawns and just blast people off point over and over again. Make sure you continuously do that. That being said, you should not be ignoring point as the defending team. It's just if you're in hot water, just con look. Ah, as you can see, he's trying to trap this and he only gets really to these stairs. So that's as far as you can get and a pyro can easily air blast that away or shotgun it away before he walks out. Um, so keep that in mind. Either way, um, what was I saying? As the defending team, you basically just want to, uh, continuously keep your focus around the area of the point without necessarily leaving either the lobby or the, uh, far right side. Now, let's say your team is watching lobby real hard and you guys are defending and the combo's real far into right side. Well, you've just left yourselves open to main and out of main, they can just rotate their combo down through this area into last. And if they do that, then they're basically behind you and on the point. Uh, and then your players will have to be forced to walk back. So just be near the point at all times. You never know when a f your flank's going to die up there and then their flank's going to drop down onto the point and cap it. It's a pretty fast cap as all last points on control points are. Um, so, you know, just always keep someone wary. Now, talking about sentry spots on last, uh, personally, I prefer this far left sentry spot to the other one. Um, just because on the other one now, they opened up that vent way too large. And because of this, it's very easy for someone to get behind and just spam the sentry out from behind. Um, or even from the front. I mean, that sentry spot was never really my favorite. But over here on the left, if you decide uh, you want your sentry here close to the wall, then it watches about half the point and it doesn't get spammed by soldier. But you can put the sentry all the way to about here and then it watches pretty much the whole point and this wall protects the sentry from getting spammed out by that soldier what a lot of ngs don't do well is that they put their sentry too close to this edge immediately you get soldier spam over there in addition to whatever you're dealing with from the normal place but if you just move it slightly to the your right you're going to avoid the soldier spam and you watch the entire point. There's no need to get that extra range over there. Wrangling just the point is just fine. That's the point of the sentry anyways, to keep people off point. Another spot that's experimental and something that my team has done in the past and has worked in the past um, and that I'm very fond of is actually back here. So if you put your sentry under here, not only is this completely fucking not meta, it's like it's completely unexpected. No one will guess that your sentry is there until someone dies to it. Once someone dies to it, then it's less effective. But um, for the first time you set up for the first defense, try it out. Some engineers can pull it off, some can't. But if you can pull that off, uh, that is extremely effective. And it also allows your combo to watch a little closer to both of these openings. So your combo can stand here and with your engine right there with their sentry the dispenser can be pretty close to them so they they can just feed off of this while the flank is upstairs taking care of business uh in the lobby 
So that's the gist. Um, that's the gist of the defense and the offense on this map. It's a pretty simple map. Some little gimmicks to take care of are uh, you can stand on these TVs in the middle. Soldiers love to stand up on those TVs and when you guys are on the ropes on defense um, it might not be a bad idea to have your defensive soldiers standing up there. Go ahead and jump up there music. Yeah. That's sneaky as fuck. And no one looks up, especially in steel. So if you have a soldier up there uh, and they're t and everyone's down on your team and all four of their combo members stand here, the soldier can just drop down and just start barraging them with rockets from above. Or just stand up there and hit them from right there. Um, and it's, it's very effective. Um, okay. So, now that we've covered all the basics, is there anything I left out or... Uh, can you build up there? That's a good question. Yes, don't do it. Because, well, there's one corner of it you can build on. Don't do it because it's actually garbage. It is hot garbage and you will do nothing by building up there. Um, any other questions? Anything I'm I missed? Sure you skipped pushing second. Pushing second? Okay, we'll talk about pushing second then. Thank you. Um, so pushing second. That's exactly right, actually. I did skip pushing a second. So if you guys are waiting for the Uber in lobby, uh, then you can just go straight out main once you have it. Because if you're Ubered this close, chances are they won't have enough time to back out and they'll be forced out of last. Um, so Uber pushes from lobby into second are really easy. But if your team just can't uh, hold a position in lobby for some reason, um, then you have a few other options. First of all, you should have your flank constantly trying to put pressure on house. Because of all the elevation changes here, this is their playground and Soldier can jump up and down, Scout can get all the all around here um, really quickly, in and out and under if they need to. Um, so, take advantage of house area and the elevations in it as flank. Uh, but combo, let's say the main push isn't working out, don't be afraid to rotate into far left because being over here, you get a visual of the point and you're a little closer to their team. Uh, a lot of teams are intimidated by this because sometimes teams will have their flank watch up here. And if they have their flank watch up here, then there's the fear of the scout jumping down and the soldiers spamming down onto you. Um, this typically won't work against a demo and a heavy that's revved up and a pyro ready to reflect rockets. So if you just move together and as a team, then your combo can move past this and around the left side. But that's really only if you guys can't just grab lobby, build the uber, and then immediately push into second. In fact, if you guys successfully push mid, the ideal circumstance for, for playing this map would be um, pushing mid by killing the sniper in the demo, and then immediately pressing forward once you cap mid, immediately into second, and because they still don't have a sniper in a demo up, you cap it. By the time you finish capping, you have the uber, and then you push into last with an uber. Um, and that's the, like, perfect game. You can cap it. You can, like, do this entire map in, like, I think the shortest time is, like, a minute and 12 seconds or some shit like that. It can go really fast, and the momentum works with the team that's winning, basically. Um... On this map a few seasons ago, I coined the phrase, if you're winning, you deserve to win more. And that's completely true in all CP maps, but especially on Vanguard. Um, especially on Vanguard, it, it, the spawns are so fast, the game plays so fast, that if you start winning, you deserve to win more. So continue to act like you deserve to win more. Um, talking about... Uh, what if you can't push second right away right off of the mid like their demo and their sniper dies But somehow the heavy holds you off in lobby Well, then uh, keep your medic alive slowly push the heavy out of lobby by the time the heavy and the, their medic is out of lobby um, Then uh, You have the uber because you won the mid fight and um, hopefully at this point, uh, you've been working with your flank to try and force the medic because they also have Uber if their medic didn't die in mid fight. So force the medic. Once the medic is forced, they're not gonna have a good time trying to push you out of lobby because again, it's disadvantageous for them to push into here. If they do, just counter Uber and you guys should be able to like finish them off easily. Um, but 
Uh, force the medic, and then once you force the medic, then just like I said at the beginning, you can just Uber right out of this main door, and you won't have a problem pushing second because it's so close. Um, so, yeah, that's how you would push. Go about pushing second in most circumstances. Is the are there any other things I missed or any other questions? Uh, okay, that's a good question. Will NG be considered flanker combo on when you're pushing? Then engineer is considered flank. I would say the engineer should always stay with the soldier and start the game off always assuming that your team is going to win. Assume that your team is always going to win the mid fight. So start with minis, start with your shotgun, start with, you know, the the DM or NG loadout. And then um, once you win the mid and whatnot, continue to push with your flank and support them with mini sentries and support them with your shotgun. However, if you're pushed back, you're no, you're not a combo NG or a flank NG. You're a support NG. Um, the cool thing about CP is that it's really three game modes all in one. It's uh, it's Koth because you're constantly fighting to stay on points when you're holding. It's Stopwatch because there is an offensive mode of thinking and a defensive mode of, of thinking on every point. So you can't just... Sometimes you will want to hold for a long time and sometimes you will want to try and make ground and push into the other team Just like in payload if you were uh, holding on each point for example, and it's also uh, um, It's Koth, it's payload and it's also just CP in that well obviously this is capture points and uh, everyone knows on capture points maps. We all know the tropes. We all know last on every capture point map the point caps really fast so standing on it for a few seconds will grant you a victory i believe on vanguard it's three second cap time for last um so three seconds and you win essentially um we also know that spawn timers and spawn locations change on cp maps as the map goes on um you know all these different mindsets that you should be going into it with um, I think the most important thing to consider, especially when playing Engineer or any class that's very dynamic, I mean, if you're a demo, you're pretty much going to be giving off spam and damage the whole map. But if you're an NG, a spy, a sniper, uh, even a heavy sometimes, your playstyle changes dramatically depending on where on the map you are and whether you're in the pushing mindset or the defending mindset. So, um, as an NG, just like I said, if you guys are pushing hard, be a flank NG. But if you guys are not pushing so much, if you're holding more often, be a support NG and run level threes and play with uh, not your combo necessarily, but play behind the rest of your team so that your team has a cushion to fall back on. Any other questions? Uh, demo rollout. Demo rollout, okay. So personally, and this is just my preference, um, I like rolling the demo out about as fast as the rest of the team because, like I said at the beginning, um, you aren't racing the other demo to mid because the other demo isn't going to do a lot in mid. You're racing the other sniper to mid. And if you as a demo or whoever's playing demo rolls out too fast and their sniper gets there before your sniper does, your demo is just going to die because he's going to be alone and the only person to headshot. But if you must, you're going to spam uh spam. You're going to spawn somewhere up here on this in this area. So sticky jump to the door. Once you sticky jump to the door, you can place a sticky there, sticky jump over here, and then place a sticky there. And I've seen demos do it a few ways. Some demos like going underneath and continuing to sticky jump surfing off of this this ra this uh, stairway here all the way out through second. If you have the skills to surf that, um, but you can you can surf that ramp all the way into lobby. Actually, I've seen demos do it, and that's that's pretty much the meta rollout. Once you're in lobby, then you can just walk out onto mid. Um, or alternatively, I've seen demos go through upper lobby. So I'll show you kind of the area they head out through. So again, same same two sticky set. Um, you know, get out to here, and then you can just jump onto that balcony up there. So let's see. Yeah, I didn't double jump even. Uh, but once you're on this balcony, then you can propel yourself all the way across the lobby. This one's going to be a little longer, but I I had a demo main do this uh, t 
two times ago when this map was played and then jump across the point again that one's super long so it'll be a little slower but you might get there around the same time as your team anyway so it might be something to consider something else um sometimes this is very rare though a uh, demo will spawn on this side of the spawn so you have a couple of choices either you're going to go ahead and try and sticky jump to the other side straight across or you're going to sticky jump straight through this shutter uh, and then out through here and then from here get onto this plank and then do the lobby rollout from there instead um, but again this map isn't really like a rollout intensive map what I again what I strongly suggest you guys at least try you might not like it and if you don't that's all completely up to your team I highly encourage you guys to experiment on your own see what you guys like see what you guys don't like scrim a lot this weekend but um, I really encourage you to try whipping your sniper all the way to the mid just whip your sniper to mid and see what that takes you because if you can get an early sniper sight line that could make a difference in what team wins the mid especially if your team has a solid sniper you don't need to be a god sniper to just be there before the other guy and already be scoped in like if you can't headshot for shit but you get scope but you scope in before the other guy and you can fully charge body shot him that's already good enough like that'll already win you the mid so you know play Play smart, and on this mid, definitely play around your sniper. Um, rotate your combo the same way that your sniper wants to stand. So if your sniper stands main, rotate your combo out main. Because while this quote unquote puts your sniper in danger or your combo in danger, it also protects your sniper. And sometimes your sniper is even more important of a pick on this mid than say a heavy or a demo. Um, and if you're and if you just can't move the combo that fast then have your sniper rotate with you but play around the sniper for the mid that's the lesson um anything else okay well i guess that's it for the map review i'm guessing you guys are scrimming after this thank you all for showing up and thank you for listening you guys are great <laughs>